recording. Awesome. So thanks for joining me on the Blab today. Um, like I said, we're going to be talking about LinkedIn for speakers and for thought leaders, um, subject matter ex experts, anybody who has um, a personal brand and something to share. So LinkedIn is a fabulous platform for, for sharing your brand. Um, we've got three hot seats available for anybody who wants to join in, share tips, ask questions and get into discussion. So I welcome you. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, nice to see some more people um, jumping in and joining us. So we've only got a half an hour, so and I've got a lot to say uh, right now. I'm not going to say it all to you now, <laughs> but I have got a lot, uh, a lot to share about LinkedIn. As I said, I can talk about this for days and days and days. Hence, I created a 12-week program. So yay! Um, oh, I need to accept you. How do I accept you? That is a question. Okay, I'm learning. Like I said, this is a bit of my first um, blo um, blab. Ah, okay. Warwick, Warwick, where, where do I, um, you've just run a blab yourself, an awesome blab, I must say. How do I accept you as to, you know, to let you to, into my, into the seat? What does that do? Hmm, see, unlock seat. Mm -hmm, hmm, let me cancel and try again. Okay, because I, I can only, aha, here we go. Now I can accept, sorry. Here we go. We have Doyle. We have Warwick. Awesome. Hello. So hopefully you, you guys will be able to jump in. Hi, Doyle. Oh, hi, hi. Nice to see you. Hello. Yay. Hey, Warwick. Nice to see you both here. Yeah, good to be here. No, let's go. Oh, let's get um, Sally in as well. Fantastic. Great. So we're going to be talking about LinkedIn for speakers. You're all speakers. Hi, Sally. Um, nice to see you all here. Um, so I'm just going to go through a few things that I believe are parts of LinkedIn that can be leveraged and, you know, jump in. I'd love to, love to know your opinion. So actually, let's, let's get straight in and talk about profile photo. Because um, if some of you who are connected to me on LinkedIn will may notice I'm playing a few games with my own profile photo. I'm breaking my brand. I'm breaking my own rules. Uh, and what I'm doing for the next 30 days is doing everything you shouldn't do on LinkedIn. So, yeah, a bit risky. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> bear with me. There's been cleavage. There's been... Uh, there's, there's, there's <laughs> some, uh, it wasn't my cleavage. Of that? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I've shown, I showed cleavage a few times too, so it seems to work for me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. I think I'm... I think I've got back cleavage even. <laughs> or side <laughs> cleavage. Oh, dear. So, yeah, it's a cleavage on LinkedIn profile photos, good or bad. <laughs> what business are you in? Yeah, it depends what yeah, business it depends you're on what you're after. <laughs> so, and, and I think that, yeah. I mean, like, you know, we're joking about it, but I think that's a very serious thing in terms of your profile picture has to be who do you want to attract? Who are the people that, you know, that you want to – what's the image that you want to get across, you know? I've seen so many people that look like they've just got someone's taken the photo of them in the backyard and we'll just crop auntie out and you've got an arm over their shoulder and a hand down the front and that'll do versus, you know, if you want to be seen to be professional, you get a real shot done or, um, and, you know, don't Photoshop your pictures, people. Like you're not an Oompa Loompa. You're not that tanned. Embrace whatever it is that you've got. So, you know, that's that would be a couple of my thoughts, you know. I have to share one with you. Yeah, it's, it's important to convey that professionalism that you have and, and people are looking for too. So, look, if you're a comedian or sort of, you know, a lighter side of business, then, yeah, make it a little bit fun and, and that sort of thing. But I think the platform itself speaks for itself that says, hey, LinkedIn is technically for professionals. So let's kind of up the ante. Let's sort of make sure that our photos look good. And, and it's not just a snapshot of you in the toilet or in the bar or the pub or something like that, that it's actually something useful and, and, uh, oh, cause, cause it, it really, it's your, it's your personal brand, right? It is a big brand. I totally agree. I think it's, um, I think Joe oh, and actually, Warwick are frozen. Do you guys, you mind? Um, <laughs> but I think, I think it's also one of those things where, you know, like you said, it's about your brand and when you get your professional headshots done, you know, there's a, there's a line there that says, you know, just how much Photoshopping, where it says none. If you look at my latest one, I've got two incisors on one side, so I was a little bit over-Photoshopped. Um, so I think that's hilarious. I think it's hilarious. I've turned into We're a gonna look now. Um, obviously not using that photographer again. Um, but, yeah, it's we'll apart from my dodgy dental work that the, the photographer did, it has to match 
who you are, what your brand, what you want your brand to say, which is what everyone else says you are. Um, I think that's super important. And I've, I have been loving watching your photos, Joe. Um, the strapless number yeah. was pretty cool. I kind of looked at it without reading what you were doing. I looked at it and went, what is she doing? So it worked. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. One of my colleagues who sort of came up with the idea for me, um, he said, just do it. Don't tell anybody anything. And I thought, oh, I can't do that. Because um, be, if, if I'm trying to build a relationship with a corporate client and they're me, just meeting me, they've got no idea. They'll think, yeah. who is this idiot? So I'm, I'm, I've, at least I've got, I've got day one, day two, so at least it shows I'm, it's, it's part of something weird. Who is this person? So, yeah. But I, my, I, I like people to laugh with me. Not necessarily at me, but laugh with me as, as we learn. So I'm going to call it, I guess it's edu edutainment. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> I think I think in your case, yeah. Joe, it fits together nicely because you are kind of that LinkedIn expert. So you're, you're sort of conveying, hey, what works and what doesn't. And you're kind of testing the waters and telling people about it. So, hey, go for it. Like, I, I think that that's wonderful <laughs> um, that you kind of just like let it out there and see what people say because you're you're testing it, right? <laughs> and what's, what's appropriate for LinkedIn? Who knows? And and it, it comes down to brand, doesn't it? I mean, my brand's a little bit quirky and, I, you know, I'm happy to put things out there. And like I said, I'm, I'm happy for you all to laugh at me. I mean, Russell's laughing at me. Warwick's certainly laughing at me. Um, yeah, go for it. Um, you know, whereas some people, they're a lot more reserved. It's not going to fit. So certainly don't do it if it doesn't fit your brand. Yeah. But people are judging you. But that's the thing. You've got six or seven seconds for someone to make it form an opinion and they see your photo first before they see anything. And if you're not looking like a professional speaker like a you know like an expert in your area or you know just someone serious or or even someone quirky but have a really a good quality photo i mean i always say use a professional if you can or do the next best thing you know don't do a yeah. screenshot don't like i said don't over photoshop or take it you know and whatever you do yeah. don't do and just simple things like make sure it's the right resolution like some people you know, they've zoomed in, so it's all pixelated, and it just looks rubbish, and it's just a really simple thing. All right, now I've got to go and see Sally's photo. Oh, so cool. <laughs> and, and whatever you oh, do, don't... Marianne, thanks so much. Thanks so much. I have one on either side. I have to actually, there's a program I'm doing at the moment, and we have to give a speech about ourselves as one little component. And so I have that photo up there. Sorry. And I am compelled to say things like, isn't she well photoshopped? Because that's how bad it is. <laughs> so. You kind of expect it, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. And actually, I'm going to jump off and let social etiquette come in. And I'll still be listening, though. So social etiquette, All come right. on in. There's actually... Thanks for joining us. How do I get out without hanging up? Yeah, yeah just the X at the top corner. Out, so. um, there's actually a, 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 an article, Jason Maloon, Maloon from uh, Brisbane, and uh, he's a, a professional photographer and that sort of thing. But his sort of latest research, I'll maybe tag him in the post later, but his latest research was um, that uh, selfies are not good for profile pictures. So they're absolutely the worst things that you can imagine for conveying that sense of professionalism and, and what it is that you're trying to do. So you know what, if it just means giving your camera, your phone to somebody to say, here, take a nice picture of me, with a nice plain background, you know, framed properly, cropped properly, go for it. But don't go and take a selfie, whatever you do. Get a helpie. A, a helpie, word, sure. That's, that's what I learned <laughs> recently. It's called um, Mary, Marianne um, and I and a group of us had a helpie recently. Um, we were looking for what's the name for a photo? It's not a selfie that someone else takes. We didn't know what the name was. We were trying to work out what's it's the name. A photo. <laughs> <laughs> They're 200 years old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's reinvent it and call it something quirky yeah. and you know we've got wifis and selfies yeah. and, and now we've got a groupie no 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 sorry not yeah. a groupie. <laughs> <laughs> now Adrian, do you have anything to add we can't see you. you're a little bit dark, but, light, um, I'm sure we can hear you yeah no, open, your curtains. open your curtains put a light in front <laughs> close your curtains Oh, 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 go, go. Go Get closer. There we go. Now, there's a great profile. We should um, screenshot that. There's your profile yeah. photo. That's a great photo. Nice yeah, and dark, you, you know. <laughs> Joe, I'm going to jump off. Let someone else have a crack. All right. Thanks, Warwick. <laughs> now, Mel uh, Marianne, do you have your microphone on? We can, oh, we can see you, but we can't hear you. And you've now you've frozen. Can't hear you. Hmm. 
Hmm, I'm not sure there. All right, so we'll, we'll just wait where you fix your technical issues. Yeah, I can't hear you um, at all. Uh, Doyle, you can't hear me, no can idea. you? It's not no, my ears. No, no okay. I, I, I thought maybe you had magical I hearing. Or magical, not where I am. I'm pretty far away, so <laughs> I'm actually in Montreal. Yeah. Super, yeah. Superhero. <laughs> all right, another question, then. We'll move on to the next topic. Um, headline. Now, for me, I, I talk about the headline as being a positioning statement, and really it's it follows you everywhere. And it's, you know, people forming an opinion on that as well as your photo. And it's 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 ability, I suppose, it's, it's got to be clickable, for want of a better word. So people click and then read your profile. Um, what what are some of your tips around or what do you find works for you in terms of your headline? I mean, you know, do you have do you have a positioning statement as part of your headline? Are you using keywords? Um, you know, anything interesting that you've come well, across? One of the things that I found find kind of annoying, <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm not sure if it's acceptable practice, but when people actually put keywords beside their name type things, so Joe, Joe Bloggins, um, you know, super duper ace consultant kind of thing, and then they have their headline uh, type thing. So they've kind of changed their name to adapt to the actual keywords type thing. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. I, you know, you might as well play with a level playing field. Uh, if you want to do that, great. But I don't think it really conveys a, a good sense of professionalism. Again, in terms of a headline, I change mine out every couple of months, type thing, just sort of keeping focus and on obviously the core business of what I do, which is digital strategy and that sort of thing. So making sure that I still convey that, um, and just kind of testing the waters to see, okay, does this work? Do people respond, or is it just a, a, a flat line or kind of thing? So, yeah, get out there, try it. Use something creative, use something artistic, use something that sort of really represents you as well. And that's kind of what's going to connect with people first. Actually, just to touch on something you said, Doyle, about uh, people adding the tagline to their name, because uh, a lot of people do that. It's against LinkedIn's user agreement. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if, if you've read the user agreement, I read it often because it's what that's I do. Um, <laughs> nice bedside reading, you know. <laughs> I'm sure you do. <laughs> but you shouldn't do yeah. that. But LinkedIn don't police it. I mean, there's so many people um, and, and speakers. I mean, I know quite a few professional speakers that do do that. And even some LinkedIn trainers who I'm really good friends with, they are actually now trialing well, I mean, it. Because it, it doesn't help you okay. get found. But it, yeah. it's a, it does, yeah. If, you, yeah. But it's not meant for that. And it looks silly, silly if, if people mention you. Well, especially, and your whole yeah, if, you, if you're up, reading so. through sort of a, a summary or a post or something and you can't actually see their full name because it kind of runs off onto the side as well. So... From a practical perspective, I'm not yeah. sure. From an SEO search perspective, I don't know, test it. Has anybody tested it and have some sort of actual data that they can use to say, hey, my yeah. profile was viewed this many more times because I added those keywords right to my name? So it'd be interesting. Well, I've got a colleague okay. testing that right now. I'm not willing, I'm not gaming because it's not, it's kind of walk, I like to walk talk, which is except the photos, the photo thing I'm testing. Um, I don't want to test too many things at once, yeah. otherwise it looks yeah. bad. Well, <laughs> Russell, what's your views um, on the headline? Any well, tips or the, tricks? I, or... I'm coming on quickly because I think that um, uh, I am a great test case for how to improve. As In other words, like you can use me <laughs> as a model because I don't think I'm, I'm not using oh, LinkedIn <laughs> very well. Uh, I am doing the bare minimum. There is a post showing up from 2014 as one of the things that's on there. Um, <laughs> And uh, the only thing I've updated recently is, is my headshot because I, I got a new one. Um, and, and I'm looking for some advice. The only, and the other reason I jumped on is just backed off the, uh, the Photoshop conversation was um, one of the things that I often tell women who tend to be a little older is that Photoshop, especially smoothing out lines and things like that, is really stealing so much experience from their brand. Uh, there are so many women that are taking 20, like 30 that. years like off themselves, not showing the authentic them so that they get a different representation when they're actually in the room. Um, and, and yeah, it came, to, it came to me one day when I was talking to a colleague and I said, that really takes experience away from you um, and uh, sort of steals it. And uh, I've been saying that ever since because I, I think it's the only way to say it um, to a, a lady without getting slightly. <laughs> I really like that. I'm, I've actually just written that Thank down. You. I'm going to quote you somewhere with one of your photos. But if you want to tear my LinkedIn up and tell me what That's I should awesome. be doing, what I'm doing wrong, um, I, I haven't been using it. Like digital marketing is what I, I do in a lot of the spaces. It's just that I don't use LinkedIn. Um, and so literally LinkedIn and Facebook, for me, if they're not for clients, are holding areas. 
um, and I would be the classic plumber with the leaky tap. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Holding areas, I like that. You, you come up with some great sayings there. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going to look at your profile and maybe maybe I'll feature in a blog and say, this is, you know, yeah, okay. this is what could be done with this profile. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was okay. more a case yeah. of, uh, so for my, for instance, the, the headline there, I've got uh, a brand design guy, brand strategy, professional speaker, marketing. Now, that's not a headline, really. Uh, it's I, I feel that I should be telling a story mm -hmm. through LinkedIn. I feel like I should be actually getting the essence of, my purpose across um, so that people who are going to engage with that will find me, but I haven't done that. Um, uh, would I be thinking in the right direction would be the question. Absolutely. I mean, it's a great place to to share your story. And I've created a seven step um, summary formula to go, you know, that helps you create the, and I'm happy to share it with you. Um, you if you were in my the, session the, convention, you probably, yeah. no, you weren't, you were, you were presenting. You were, you were presenting at the same time as me at convention, so you yeah. didn't get to see any of that gold. That's right. <laughs> but I will share it with you. And anybody else who wants is welcome. That'd be great. Let me just um, see if I can hear you. Well, I think it's... Yeah, yeah but happy to help. Yep. I think well, it's about finding... Um, go on. Okay. No, go ahead. Sorry, Dob, did you have something? Oh yeah, no. I was just going to say, I, I think it's good to um, take a look at yeah wh where it is that your audience is, or your clients, or your network as well. And being able to sort of use that platform for that accordingly. So um, I use LinkedIn. I use it as sort of a one-on-one -on -one type thing. Like when I'm coming into a new city, uh, a new market, I'll, I'll approach specific people within, you know, do a LinkedIn search and find people that I can then connect with and that sort of thing. So uh, I've used it, yeah, throughout um, Canada and, and the U.S. And um, yeah, it's it's a great networking tool to be able to do that and target people specifically. So, excellent. All right, well, okay. I'll add it. Actually, just to ask a question on the chat. Okay, cool. Thanks, Russell, and uh, I'll I'll be in touch anyway. <laughs> I've got lots, yeah. lots of opinions. Hey, Daniel, <laughs> I know someone's just asking what's the, purpose, what's the purpose of the topic. Um, what's he saying? But what's the basis? So talking about LinkedIn, uh, but specifically for speakers, thought leaders, you know, subject matter experts, and, and that sort of thing. I um, hope that helps um, bend the cycle. Um, post a link, Joe. Post a link to, are we talking about to Russell's profile for review? Group review? Frozen again. Can you hear me? Oh, hi. Marianne, we can hear seven, you. Seven steps. Oh, and you've got. <laughs> yeah, oh, seven, post sorry. Yes. All of us, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I'll do it after because just because I've got to remember where I put it because <laughs> I've got a new version. Um, if it's not live, I'll share it. Actually, I'm just wondering if I share it after the event. Do you still get it? I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I, I'm used to hosting Blab, so we'll see how that goes. Um, but certainly, if not, just um, just message me. You can find me everywhere. Just ask me for it and I'll give it to you. No problems. Um, oh, Sally's oh, back. I, I hey, back hello. in. There was an open seat. Yeah, take it. And there is one more. So if someone else wants to jump in, um, they're having problems with with. Um, yeah, sound. and happy to um, um, happy to pass the seat on to you if you want. Oh well, if there's well, one free, in, so why you, not you, keep you, it warm? Yeah, okay. You lovelies so, are all frozen. So Sally, so. have you got anything to add about um, what we're talking about head, headlines? Um, you know, one of the things, things that I try to do is. You know, you try to be all-encompassing in a very, very, very short line. And I take this on board, um, Dor, your point about how you don't like seeing those keywords. And it's like, well, you know, how do you get that balance? And so I I'll, um, I like your tip, Dor, that you change it every little bit, every once in a while, you know, quite regularly. And I think that that might actually be a, a nice thing for speakers to do because if you're if you are a speaker, then you're... Your work should be staying fresh. Your brand should be staying fresh. And yeah. maybe that means that some of the language you use in that headline should be freshened up. Um, you know, I am, you know, if you want to put it in traditional old school language, I am a management trainer. Okay, that is not the language I use in my headline. You know, so, you know, I think it's, there's a real balancing act. And, and one of the things I liked about your presentation at the recent, PSA convention, Joe, was that, um, you know, the real right and wrong is got some parameters to it, you know. It's not, it, there's there's a lot of grey, I think, in that. And I think that um, 
if we're forever working it, then we're, we're, we're setting ourselves up for more success. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and it's not like a magic fix. There's not, I mean, I've got a few formulas for creating your headline. I've even created a ebook, um, head, Headline Hacks, so that you can work out a formula that fits your your brand, your style, and depending on what you're after. But also, I mean, when you write your profile, I believe you should be sitting in the seat of your ideal client, your ideal audience, your ideal, whoever's booking you to speak, whoever's buying your books, whoever's, you know, if you're looking for a job, you know, whoever's going to be employing you. Because you're speaking their language, you're speaking, you, yeah, using keywords. You, you want to be aware of the keywords that you're trying to rank for, the, you know, but you don't want to just make it look like keywords. It needs to, it needs to connect. It needs to be conversational. Um, I mean, you've only got 120 characters, so you haven't got much room to, to say mm. it. And do what, I mean, what Doyle, Doyle just said about mixing it up. Um, I mix mine up from time to time as well because you might want to focus on a different thing. If you're trying to get some work in a particular area, you, your headline might speak to that. Whereas, you know, next month you might be you might be targeting something else. So you might tweak it to attract what you want to get more of, you know, you know what I mean? And I like yeah. I, and I think that reminder, no matter what, um, it's client you know, write it as the, the reader focus or the client focus. You know Absolutely. what are you delivering? And I think it comes down to, you know, features and benefits and such, you know, it's actually benefits that your client wants to hear and be confident in their decision to pick you. So, yeah. Yeah. And I think as soon as you say something like the number one LinkedIn expert in the world or something like that, you speak, that's your ego speaking. Uh, I, I would never say anything like that. But, you know, you, you see those people that it's all about them, it's all about what they've achieved, and which may be important to your clients. So, it depend, like, like I said, it depends on your clients. If that's, yes, if, if that's what they're after, then you talk to that. But if it's just about you and your ego and you maybe proving yourself or whatever it is, I think you have to be really careful that you don't you don't step into that um, zone where your ego is talking for you and you're not you're talking at rather than with. Mm, and I think yes. if, if that's the case, then it's getting people like you engaged to read it and actually give that impression or, you know, even just trusted people that you can put around you and say, can you please read my LinkedIn profile as if you wanted to search for someone like me to purchase me? And I think that's that's where you've got to come from it from the perspective of, A, pick people who you trust will give you their honest opinion and, and set the scene that it's a case of, Read it as if you are trying to decide whether to purchase me as your speaker, your presenter, your trainer, your coach, your whatever. Um, you know, and yeah. I would, I'd be more inclined to go to someone like you, um, you know, someone who has got a, a real niche into LinkedIn um, as well. And you are a speaker, so, you know, those sorts of things go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and that, that's something I do do. I do I do review profiles. So Russell's gonna um, I'm gonna be looking at his profile, and mm -hmm. I, I do tend to look at things because I'm always looking for how can we do better, how can we? And I, I look at my own. I mean, I tweaked mine recently, um, you know. And like I said, I'm always on my profile every day, changing my photo now, which is not not for the better actually. So don't don't follow me if you just if you just joined us and you um, want to look at my my profile. Don't do what I'm doing with my profile photo at the moment. I'm doing a test on myself. <laughs> it's all good. Um, my professional uh, photo is coming back in between. It's going to, you know, there's going to be appearances, so I do come back at, you know, um, but in between we're going to have some testing. You need a uh, hashtag, not, this, you're not back. this photo. It's not this photo for your profile or something. A hashtag, it's so people get it. Well, exactly. I'm going to reveal what the hashtag actually stands for. But the profile photo you can see on, which is on my, I think it's on my Twitter account, which is on Blab, that's my real profile photo, um, one of the professional ones I had done about a month ago. Uh, yeah, so that one is going to keep coming back because that's part of my brand right now. But, um, yeah, because people judge you based on what they see and what they think they know based on what you're saying. So if your profile is written in a, you know, if, if you just say you, you haven't bothered filling out the summary, for example, that's a really important piece of your profile. Yeah. Or it's written in a, a list of achievements or this is these are my, uh, like a job description almost from way back when, that's not going to connect to your audience either, especially as a speaker because each person's a personal brand. That, and that leads me to a question if I can. Yeah. Because you can move components up, down and around, and I think I already know the answer to this. Yeah. But, you know, you, you know, there's a below the scroll, fold, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, where do we put what first in your opinion? 
Love it, love it, love it. Um, Great question. I mean, there's no right and wrong answer. It, it comes, it's, it's different depending on, on who you are. But for me, I believe the summary mm -hmm. should be first. Uh, purely because that's once someone's clicked on your profile, so your headline headline is allowed to be found and it's clickable, so it's interesting. The summary is your connection piece. Then it, it should be written in it from your voice, so first person. So the it's almost a first conversation. So some people read the details, some people scan through it, and that may even get them to call you to you know to connect with you to book you whatever it is. But then it's what's next. So the rest is really backup. So you've got uh, things like your experience, which is kind of, you know, like your traditional CV, uh, what you've done in the past, how it's relevant now. For me, that's further. I mean, that's, that's underneath. But for me, I've got my publications first because publications as a, as an, I suppose, an expert authority, you know, whatever speaker, whatever you are, if you've got books, um, interviews, online products, things that give you more credibility, I have that first because also it's, it's quite a short section. So you've got the name of the, the book, for example, and a direct link to that book. So say it's on Amazon, people can just click read buy, you know. So, and it's a nice way to validate. So yeah. that's I have that at the top. And I refresh that section quite often. Um, you've got projects. So if you're involved in a, a bigger project, say with multiple speakers or some key people around, you can align yourself with them. That might be more important to you right now. Especially if you're looking to work with a particular type of organisation that you've worked with in the past and they can see that. If you've got a long experience, I mean, mine's quite long and I've got, there's a reason for all my, all my past roles being there, um, but it can become quite long and you think, well, you know, who's reading this? Well, no one's reading it. It's not there to be all, no one's reading the whole thing because people will say to me, your profile's way too long. And I said, well, you're not supposed to read it all. <laughs> That's not what it's there for. It's there for findability, for connection, for links, different things. Um so they're, they're the things, but I would be moving your, even within the experience, you can move your roles around, uh, move them move them around so things are relevant first, and which actually leads me to another point, a bit of a tip as a speaker. So if you're a speaker and you run a business, for example, I actually split mine in two and I advise speakers to do that because you might be a consultant in your organisation or you might del deliver training, but as a speaker, that's your own, that's almost like your personal brand. So having two roles, so I've got one as a consultant, one as a speaker, and then I can collect recommendations as a speaker. I can link um, media as a speaker. So things like I've got a speaker kit, a speaker one page, um, some videos, YouTube, they're on YouTube, they're all connected together that back up yeah. my speaker brand. My brand as a consultant, I've got different things and to back that up. Yes. So does that make sense? Is that just I don't know if that roles? answers your question. No, I've got a really really tangent there. <laughs> yeah, two roles. So you've got them that they could even be the same date. So say you started your business or became a speaker, or whatever you know you call yourself um, in a certain, say the 1st of January, um, 2010. You might have two roles running at the same time. So pick, you know, pick which one's going to be at the top because you can rearrange them. But it allows you to then ask for recommendations as a speaker versus ask for recommendations as a consultant and the context mm. is very different. Yeah, it makes yeah. a lot of sense. So I don't know if you guys yeah. have got anything. Yeah. So yeah, so I just yeah. jumped on to ask another question? question. So in the branding space, then uh, let's say that you're take you're moving yeah. from doing one thing to going doing something new. Um, normally, I talk about making a pivot to that rather than um, just changing wholesale, and then people get very very confused. They're like, oh, suddenly that person went from doing this to that, so I don't obviously see them as an expert in this new thing because they've only been doing it for two minutes. So usually I suggest a pivot on that. So you take one step to the side so you can make that next step across. With profiles, how would you do that? Is it through simply just the articles that you start producing or would you change the brand persona wholesale, if that makes sense? Well, yeah, uh, yeah. Um well, I guess, yes, a lot of people are transitioning between things. So, yeah, it could be starting to talk more about that the, the new content rather than the old. So, yeah, sharing articles about the new focus. So, say you're moving more, say, um, well, I'll use myself, say I'm a LinkedIn expert and I want to become a Facebook expert, although I want to be a Blab expert. Maybe that's my thing. I'm going to leave LinkedIn. So, yeah, I'm talking a lot about LinkedIn. Then I'll just start sharing articles about Blab. So, say, Russell, you've written an article about Blab. Sally's got one. I'll share your content initially rather than, necessarily creating myself um, and add my commentary then I'll start creating my own articles and building my credibility that way maybe I'll create an ebook maybe I'll run webinars and share those through LinkedIn and 
maybe I'll add a role as well to separate it out. So there's me, the LinkedIn expert, but now I'm the Blab expert. And I guess eventually you'll drop one of them and it'll just yeah, fall so away. One of the tips I would normally that... say from content creation in general, and, and I guess that that's what this falls into, is like, let, let's take your scenario. Mm. So it's all very, very LinkedIn based. I would probably continue with a sprinkling of LinkedIn and then drop to a sort of a, a larger uh, digital marketing or social media conversation that then drips in blab and you sort of like go up and then over into that uh niche uh but just but take a little bit of time it's too long i mean you just take as long as you need but it could be a three-month transition from one thing to another and people can see that and you're sort of easing them into the water that uh old one the, uh, the yeah cause it's all in what you talk about really isn't it i mean Marianne, I'm not sure if you've got your microphone working now, but I know you've had the similar thing. Well, let me try. Yay! Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm on the iPad now, so, it, oh, okay. you know, it's it's a bit harder it's all good. the iPad, but it's working, so there you go. Yeah. Happy to be here. <laughs> Yay, so what do, you, what, what do you have to add about, because I know you've moved yourself from being known for more more around Facebook and and teens to moving more to an older audience. So how did you go with that, moving your know, transitioning? Well, probably not very well, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is exactly like you're honesty. why I'm here with the expert, Joe. <laughs> um, no, I, well, for me, it's a bit of a mismatch, really, because I've jumped from uh, more Facebook um, in the corporate sense, and now I've moved away from that, as you know, to working mostly with um, young people, as in teens and families, and young model actors, so I'm sort of... Um, looking at many different platforms, you know, like casting networks and things like that as well, which helped me. But certainly in the LinkedIn space, um, yeah, my knowledge is is not you know as expert as yours because I take the, the teens when they when they're first starting out, and so their profiles are limited right from the beginning. So I guess for for me, I need to know that that next step that's just going to help me out with them and when I'm speaking with them as opposed to me being able to offer you the um you know the advice of how I transition because I don't I, I simply don't transition I'm involved in too many pots so it might look like I'm I've got my finger uh, on the pulse of many many platforms and like you know jack of all trade expert of none um so it might look like I'm jumping mm. around but I'm not it's just I need to be across the board on quite a few with the audience that I speak to. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, and I just, that's a really good point because it, it, there are people, I suppose, that um, add, add things to their repertoire, so to speak, and they've become then too wide. Another thing, um, many years ago, I was, I was doing social media, I was doing graphic design, I was doing web design, I was doing event marketing. You get to point, hang on, what, what am I doing? What am I the expert in? So then you drop things and it's how you communicate that. And, and other in the social media training space who look to be the um, jack of all trades or maybe there are, but maybe they're just generally doing more strategy up exactly. here rather than going deep into, you know, like I go deep into LinkedIn because that's what the platform I specialise in. And I'm certainly not going to yeah. be a blab expert. That was just me having a bit of fun because <laughs> I'm very new to this. Um, but there will be someone who will go, blab, let's sing, let's do it and let's, um, Periscope when that came out, I mean, so many experts jumped on and then wrote ebooks exactly. and looked like the expert, and you know, it comes down to what's important. But yeah, so it's and I, another thing that's kind of related to your, your sort of question, Russell, is people that have double interests. So people that say uh, they're an expert in this area, but maybe they'll own this business and they'll own this business, so they're, and they're involved in many things, and yeah. they get so, so from that, ask, I, I look to the I umbrella and, and, and say, all right, well, what they all have in common, hats. and then become an expert um, in so that. On, on, um, so while like, for instance, uh, let's take social media, all right? And we'll take your example before because I know you're moving into Blab. <laughs> uh, so yeah. you've, got your link, you've got your LinkedIn there and then you've got your Blab She here. started that. Yeah, let's start and with so Ruba. you can come up and actually be um, a, an expert in, in something that's relating to both of those things if there was a connection. Um and, and and you can own that. You can give it a new name. You can actually then own the name, which is fantastic in itself. Uh, and 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 write the book on it and do all those sort of things that go with it. But um, for instance, there's people who are experts in content mm. creation, 
that are experts. They're not necessarily generalists. They're just experts in the strategy above the tool, I guess. And so for, in this instance, you're the expert in the tool, uh, but you still have mm -hmm. more um, capability above that. Yeah, absolutely. You could step to the capability in your discussions and then step to any of those platforms and I think still be able to make a good transition. What I see a lot of people doing, which uh, throws me, is when they've been speaking highly on this space and then they just jump to the to cash it all in in whatever's the 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 biggest um, you know six hundred thousand room training sessions or something. They've jumped from here being an expert in this subject to suddenly doing all the training in something that's there's a connection there, but it's really really uh, it's a long bow. Yeah, loose. And, it, and I think when you, what, with that sort of example, Russell, you're talking about someone who doesn't quite get what their brand is or what, you know, it's the squirrel. And, you know, I, I feel for them because oh, yeah. they're missing out on opportunities because people don't know how to buy them then. Well, what am I buying when I look at this? Yeah, and that's part of the trick. If you're going to actually go yeah. into a new place, mm. uh, it's um, funny just that knowing that what I'm... space you're in now, because there's all sorts of people out there that go, uh, sorry, am I cutting in and out? I am. I'm going to drop off and drop back on. I'll, I'll be back. A little yeah, bit, it's but it's not too bad. Cutting in and out. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. But what what you just said, what Russell just said, um, and uh, David um, Kasukas from Perth, um, PSA. He often I've heard him speak a few times, and he'll say, "What guy are you?" And I think you know what do you you need to be known what you're known known you need to know what you're known for whether it's like i said for me i'm known for linkedin that i do do a lot of work with, with the tool but it's not that's just a vehicle for what i do it's not what i'm all about and i can translate that to many platforms because it's actually and it took me a while to get my head around that myself you know i'm not i'm not certainly not a facebook expert i do a lot of work with facebook but i'm not the tool expert for facebook i'm more the strategy um strategy is more my thing i suppose rather than the tool but linkedin the tool I, I don't love LinkedIn. Um, it's many bugs and many limitations, and I need to be on the development team, absolutely. <laughs> but, yeah, it's yeah, it's knowing who you are and then communicating that. <laughs> now, I'm just conscious of time because I've actually said I only allowed a half an hour because it was a bit of a test. I wasn't expecting you to turn you. up, to be honest. Um, but I wouldn't turn up. <laughs> I have no idea. I thought, oh, I'll put it. Well, I, you know, I don't. This is like the first time you think live. So thank you for your dedication. But I've, I've actually got the, you know, the hour blocked out. So if you want to hang around for another 20 minutes and chat, I'm happy to be here um, if you guys are. But I just wanted to acknowledge that because if you've allowed it half an hour and you need I to break off, I understand. Um, now, did someone ask a question uh, before um, about Well, just yeah, okay, I've Sally? actually got my, my profile open because that's yep. prompting me questions. and I'm very visual and I need to ask questions based on what I can see. Now, you me you have mentioned this before in other environments, but can you, you know, your profile strength. Now, I haven't paid for premium because I'm on the fence about that. Yeah. Um, but profile strength, you know, it gets almost all full and it says, you know, almost an all-star. So it's just teasing and taunting me. So... My questions are, are, number one, does it have to be premium when it comes to your profile strength and what does profile strength actually mean to prospective purchases of the, who you are and what you do? Oh, a lovely question. I love this question. Firstly, premium pro, paying for premium has no impact on, on strength. The two are not related whatsoever. Um, but the strength itself, oh, only you see your strength. And if you're a little bit um, OCD, <laughs> OCD people get freaked out about that tiny little gap. You can never fill it. <laughs> All, All Star is the highest. Uh, <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, a colleague of mine in Holland uh, he actually created a bit of a prank and I nearly fell for it. He created um, the LinkedIn genius level and he had this circle that was full and he sh and I saw it I'm like, how on earth did you get that? What? So, and I read on it and, he, and his article was about if you're, if you're kind of searching for the full circle, um, get over it. Because <laughs> it's the reason, my, my way of explaining why, why that line or circle is complete is that you're one percent. <laughs> I'm loving Sally's reaction to it. Um, that the tiny gap is is for me a visual reminder that you're never done. And as speakers, 
yeah, there's, well, there's always things to tweak. I mean, um, Doyle said how he updates his, his headline often. That's that percentage. That's a tiny gap. You know, you, you don't build it and they'll come. It's not done and walk away and five years later you might do a bit of a, you know, an, um, a makeover. It needs to be constantly tweaked. It's it's organic. It should grow with you. So that's why it's not full. But no one else sees it except you. So it's just an annoyance. Like I said, if you're OCD and you keep seeing that and it's going to drive you nuts. No, that's, I'm not over. that OCD. But um, I <laughs> yeah. kind of got a little evil so, thought going on in my head about creating <laughs> a little, you know, full circle and popping that in my um, my summary. But no, I won't do that because that's already been done. That was such a genius, evil prank. I love and just it. to make you feel better, Sally, um, my profile is horrible, <laughs> yet I'm also an all-star. Then your profile must not be horrible, Russell. You're just being hard on yourself. <laughs> and I, I see because you put yourself out there, I reckon um, Joe's got an opportunity to do a before and after. So don't touch your profile yet, just, Russell. No. Let Joe get a snapshot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's leave it. But in terms of the review, there are there are like uh, five different levels of comp of completion. And LinkedIn to get to All Star, that it used to be quite clear as to what you you know you had to have certain things had to be complete. You had to have three recommendations. They've changed that. You don't have to have three recommendations anymore, which is silly actually, because you'd want to be encouraged to do certain things. So, yeah. But the more, that's what I but once you get to All Star, don't just go. Oh well, that's it. I'm done. Oh, and walk away. Um, that's not I'm how. I'm done. Works, as Russell said. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go. We've <laughs> reached the penultimate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think that makes sense too. The oh, fact that yeah. it's a very kind of visual to remind you to keep working it and not let it go stale. And I think that's really clever, and it's a valuable. You know, if if mm. you think that LinkedIn is a key social media platform for you, then, you know, you can't let it get dusty. So I like it. That's really I'm going to do a video to of, um, I'm just thinking, All right. you know, like you get ready to go out, you do your makeup, you do your hair, and I know you do wrestle. Russell, we just talked about I'm going to jump off because I think about, I'm um, getting ready for travelling and stuff. Um, I'm just thinking, we'll I, I might make a video. Later. Okay. All right, nice to have you. Um, Daniel, if you want to jump in, um, I'm not sure if you feel redundant because you're not joining us, but jump into the hot seat, it's free. Uh, <laughs> you're certainly not redundant, so join in. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I might make a video to comparing getting ready versus um, the start, you know, all the um, rating coming really in and what it means. <laughs> because, mm -hmm. yeah, if you, mm. yeah, I, I, that's why I love doing this sort of stuff. I'll, I'm running workshops, I always get great Absolutely. ideas on things I can create. Because I like to do fun fun stuff in my business. And I like to, um, you know, I like people to laugh, like I said, laugh and learn with Joe. I'm going to create it as a thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to jump off and let someone else in as well. So but thank I'm, you. Yeah, but I'll still be listening. I'll just jump off to create a seat, open a seat. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Sally. And any other questions, feel free to ask. Yes, Sally. If anybody else wants to grab seats, there are two seats available. Um, Daniel, we'd love to have you. Um, who else was? Um, I had a question. I'm just scrolling back. Um, oh, someone said to me, "One, two, three, JPEG. Do I have books? Um, I've got lots of ebooks um, on certain particular topics. Certain particular topics. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> Good English. Yeah, I do. So you can Proper. find some of those on my website. Um, Daniel O'Connor puts his hand up for a review. We'll have a look at your profile, and I'll certainly give you a review. Actually, for future blabs, I might once I work out this technology, I might do that each session, do a live review. Because um, I don't know how to do this yet, and I don't want to muck around now, but you can do screen shares through Blab. Um, a colleague of mine, Joel Com, did a Blab recently, and he, was, he had his iPhone plugged in and was sharing his iPhone view, and I don't know how to do that techie stuff yet, but I will learn. That would be my challenge. Um, yeah, so any other um, – Marianne, have you got any other comments around – well, anything? Anything interesting to do with LinkedIn? Mm, no, Especially I just – for me, it's mostly about, um, you know, that – no like and trust factor thing for me, you know, especially dealing with um, young teens. So I just think it's so important to have uh, whatever your, whatever it is that you do, it's just, it has to be truthful. It has to be honorable and respectful. That's my biggest, that's my biggest mm. thing in anything that I do. It doesn't matter for me. It doesn't matter how much you filled out your profile, but what you filled out needs to be, needs to be spot on. Um, yeah, because that'll create more more opportunities for you 
obviously and since yeah. I'm in reputation then that that just works better but i guess um you're you're doing this is for mainly for speakers but i, I just really want to know how i can help these young people that's that's where i'm heading so you know i'm looking for the the big the big juicy tips on on working with teens and helping them uh, get ahead. So if you've got any of those juicy bits for me, now is the time. Or we can just yeah. So teens. Um, so are we talking? Are we, yeah, yeah. What well, we can we're both in the same location. Uh, so we're actually like the next suburb from each other, so we can certainly catch up the coffee. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So that's look, great. Look, if I'm if I'm out there and I'm speaking to and I'm speaking to a whole group of teens plus their parents, um, what's yep. what's the biggest thing? Like what what's the main thing that you would you would want to offer them as far as their LinkedIn profile? Like what what's the biggest tip that you would give them? Because for me, I I tell them that I well I suggest you know that. They need to fill out certain parts of their profile, um, not worry about other other parts of it. Sorry, this is wobbling because I'm on the iPad and it's... Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no problems. Yeah, it's sort of falling over. Um, but what what would your thoughts be on um, a big takeaway for them? Like, what should they be concentrating on? Well, teens, I mean, as you know, um, LinkedIn recently, well, a couple of years ago, opened up the access to 14 now. So 14 is the youngest you can be for, for LinkedIn, which is awesome. And you might think, well, that's, that's that's too young. But generally, I'm not finding, teens aren't particularly active on LinkedIn, but I, I which is it's not a very sexy platform for them, really. But why it's important is, as, well, as you know, is, is for building that footprint. Um, so even just building a basic profile and looking at, I mean, a lot of teens are looking at getting jobs. And even if they're getting a job at Macca's or, you know, wherever they get their first job, they still need, they need a resume. So that's a good time to set up on LinkedIn. And even just a basic, I mean, they've got no work experience at that age, but what are they doing? I mean, are they doing volunteer work? Um, you know, what's, what are they passionate about in, in the career where they want to go? Um, you know, I mean, my, my son, I set him up when he was 14 and I've been working with him and he's built his uh, profile and he's got, a, he's, God, I had a business for three years, so he's a bit of a different different case. But mm. uh, but for him, he he knows what industry he wants to be in. So he's studying um, animation and gaming at the moment, and it's about connection. It's about yeah, he's not putting anything out there mm. because he's not he's a guy as well. I mean, teenage boys are not saying much mm. generally, are they? I mean, right oh, I have one, I know. <laughs> yeah, um, same. But it's it's what's important is being you know starting to build the network so that when he's ready to go get into that industry he's already following the right people following the right companies even just being seen to like and you know i don't think he comments on much yet um but i'm just mm -hmm. getting you know so i think initially yeah building a very i mean obviously it's going to be a very brief profile but having the the courage to put yourself out there and start building a network having the cuts i suppose the guts to actually okay. think well that um that marketing manager at that company, because that's what I'd like to do, or that event person, or that, you know, that speaker, why not connect to them? So I, mm. I recently um, was engaged to speak to a group of event marketing students as part of their conference. And, you know, I said to them, connect to people in the room, connect to your lecturers, connect to people in the industry and start, you know, start learning from them, even from, from a learning perspective, rather than, because obviously they haven't got much to add yet, because they haven't got the experience and the credibility, but as mm -hmm. a learning vehicle, it's great. And a networking vehicle, as you know, I mean, there's so much power in networking. So I think those angles initially, and then just finding their yeah. feet, finding their place. And if they if they are confident, and maybe they they do have some experience, maybe they're um, you know, one of these crazy guys that's you know come up with an app and they've already made millions, and you know they you know they've got some, some something to say, then they've got a reason to create content to help, to inspire other young people. Mm. You know, so I don't know. If I think too. Too, um no, that that's great, and that reinforces um, what I what I do already speak about. And but I liked it when you said about um, you know having the guts, having the confidence and the guts to go out and do it because I think that that's just a huge part of it when they're when they're so young. Mm -hmm. But also, um, it's the same for people who are. I've been working uh, recently with people re-entering the workforce. Yeah. Um, so they've been out for a period of time it could be mums who have been at home for six seven eight years and they're they're not necessarily reinventing themselves but um 
reinventing their confidence, you know, finding that confidence that they perhaps used to have, maybe they never had it. And, and so that was a big thing that you said is that in, in anything, I think for any one of us, whether we get on the stage and we speak to 20 people or 2000 people, it's, it's having that confidence to like put yourself out there. So with, with LinkedIn, because it's still very new for the young people, and certainly new for people who have been out of the workforce for six or seven years, mm. because it's not been it's not been around that time. So that that's a really good point. I'm actually going to write that down as soon as we <laughs> finish, because yeah. Or you can remind me later. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well thanks Ru- for that. That was Russell's just said. I mean, yeah, it's it's um great a reality check that they're part of a global community and they are. I mean, the fact that if you look about when we were young, mm. we didn't we didn't have any of this. I mean, they're in such a privileged place it. right now. It's awesome that I mean, the opportunities are there. They can do anything, and they literally mm. can because anything. I mean, if you want to be famous, all you need to do is be have a camera, get yourself on YouTube, and suddenly you're a celebrity. I mean, look at all the young YouTubers that are making a fortune. I still don't quite understand That's that. It. It's a whole culture thing, um, but it's a you know teenage thing. Yeah. But it's amazing what's possible, and you can build a brand so easily now for them. And you're right. And That's right. Teen, whether you're a teenager or someone re-entering the workforce, I mean, I mean, they're both probably a similar space in their head. Because I know when I took a few years off having mm. children, you know, you kind of think, oh, um, you know, I, I, who am I? I'm just a mum and. I haven't worked for a while and, and you do, you lose your confidence and you lose that and you have to build that again. And, and having, having people to guide, you know, like, um, like you and your project guiding people. Awesome. Because confidence mm. and this confidence, I think comes in two ways. You hear, you hear people talking about, you know, um, you know, fake it till you make it and, you know, have all this confidence, but confidence has to be, Doesn't work. there has to be credibility behind it. There has to be something. So teens, it's tricky because yeah, they can be confident and, and you know kind of get away with it but someone older being confident and not having any substance behind it you know that there's a bit of a fine line so it's it's confidence in it's, it's confidence in yourself that you can do the thing you're promising rather than just confidence to say oh yeah i can do that when you can't <laughs> at all and if you build no, so and if you build your linkedin profile in a way that's authentic like i said written in your own voice as well that's that's a big one i think because we're all personal brand whether whether you're an employee, whether you're a student starting out, whether you're someone enter, re-entering with the workforce, or whether you're a speaker at the top of your game, everybody's a personal brand, and mm. people will either connect mm. you or not, and that's okay. I mean, some people that's like right. me. Some people will probably think she's a nutcase, and, you know, <laughs> but mm. that's it. I mean, I, it, 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 that's a good point. Like, I, I recently worked with um, with a lady who <laughs> had some paid someone she asked me to do an audit for her, so I did. She had previously paid someone to uh, write her LinkedIn profile. So when I had a look at it, and after speaking with her, I realized that what was on her profile was not how she was speaking to me. Yeah. Complete, like completely, yeah. it just was not her. And it's almost like, oh no, what, what must she think about me? Because I speak in plain English. <laughs> And I've always believed that, you know, you, you speak in plain English, you, English, you, you write how you speak, um, because that's really yeah. you, because eventually you're just going to get caught out. And so as I was speaking to her, because we had the verbal uh, conversations, and I'm looking at her profile, and I'm thinking, but those are not your words. Mm-hmm. So I, I knew straight away that, she, that somebody else had had been involved. And so um I suggested to her that, you know, just just go in and, and do uh, little chunks, bite-sized chunks, of go in and, and rewrite, because obviously what was in there was was genuine about her, but it just didn't sound like it was coming from her. Yeah, and that's... So I just said, go yeah. in and just rewrite those little, little bits, one bit, one chunk at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, and now it's actually quite good. So. And you're right. I mean, a lot of people outsource their profile writing. I mean, I do that as a service. I write profiles for people. But the, and if you, if, then this is, comes back to if you're shopping on price, if someone like, that's doing it for $50, they're probably doing something that's very generic. They don't understand your brand and it's going to sound exactly like that. You're going to, there's going to be a massive exactly. disconnect. And that's why I'm not the cheapest. I'm certainly not the most expensive, but I work with people to, and I interview them and I get into their head and ask lots of questions and, um, I mean, a speaker I was talking to this week, um, he has an awesome background and he studied at the Disney Institute and he works with, he's worked with theme parks mm. and now he's working in a completely different industry. And I'm just going, my head's going, oh my God, you can fuse this and have fun. If, you know, you can be the the guy on the roller coaster, but wearing a suit and, uh, 
you know, if you're on the call, you're, you know, I'm talking about, I'm not going to mention names, but I just thought, wow, that's so cool. Like that's how my head works. And then, and then it's getting to understand the brand, how they speak, what kind of language they use, and then write it that way. But then even then, the, the person whose profile is needs to still own it. I mean, I'll write it, but still, it's still me writing it. And um, so I get them to read it and tweak some things. And so it sounds like them, you know, and otherwise, yeah, it just sounds like a boring bio. And, this, and going back to speakers, you'll see a lot of, um, you know, really well-established speakers and their their summary is written in third person and reads like a bio off their website. A bio yes. website, yeah, third person works well, but if you put that in your LinkedIn profile, LinkedIn's about people connecting to people and it's like mm. they're not there. It's a disconnect. So for anybody, it needs to be your voice and it needs to be your story, which is why I've created the framework to help people write it for themselves because I think that's the summary must be the, the, the hardest part to write, which is why some people just don't have one because <laughs> it's too hard. Um, so if you don't have one, um, like I said, I'm, uh, message me, email me, whatever. My email is Gerald Wildfire SM. I'll put it in the box now uh, and ask for this summer, this, um, this worksheet, and it will give you a bit of a framework as to how to write it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's important because it's your brand and it's connection. Yeah. Yeah. So any other any other discussions or questions we want to chat? Yeah. Just be, I'm just looking at the time. It's 11, so I suppose this we should. This is really hard on a, from an iPad. <laughs> Yeah, so you can't watch and type at the same time, can you really? It's probably good that you've got the camera then. I, I can. Yeah. So people who are on here, feel free to connect with me. Marianne uh, Liley Rom, I think is my, or actually it's now Marianne Rom on LinkedIn. So feel free to connect with me anywhere because I can't type. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. You want to see this setup? It's a, it's a really advanced. I'm telling you. Well, this is the best way to learn platforms is just play with them and, and test. And I mean, even when I run programs, I like to, I like to call them pilot program, which is code for things are going to go wrong. And so my current program, I launched a, a twelve <laughs> session. Well, actually, no, it's fifteen session. This particular program, but I launched it as pilot. And um, yeah, there's been a few little technical glitches and. Things that I've forgotten as part of my you know, learning uh, part of the process. So, you know, but there was a disclaimer, things are going to go wrong. Um, but just on that, I do have, yeah. oh, absolutely. I do have a, a, like the 12 session program, which is um, live webinar style with recordings and it's lots of resources and templates and all that sort of stuff. So if anybody needs help, I'll put the link in the box. You can have a look. Um, it's starting on the 1st of June, um, but, and also specifically for speakers, um, authors, thought leaders, anybody who's, who's in a, um, I don't know. I don't like the word thought leader. I'm just going to put it out there. I, I use it because I know that's what people call them or themselves. I don't like it because um, a thought leader sounds Me like either. someone's thinking and not doing very much. I do think a lot. <laughs> and the term is, it, it's used too loosely. There are what so many thought leaders out there now. Yeah, but, that, but what, I mean, it's subject matter expert. I mean, that's actually, I believe, what it is. But thought leaders like a fun, and I know some people use that as, as part of their brand now. As you know, I mean, they're teaching you how to become a thought leader and how to, Yes, and I've been engaged to help organizations build thought leaders and, you know, through content strategies and LinkedIn and that sort of thing, which is awesome. I just think it's a odd phrase or term to use personally. Yeah. I, I don't know, Russell, I don't know if you've got anything else. Yeah, create a new word. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we probably need a new word for that. This doesn't sound wanky. Can I say that? Wanky? I just think it, it does. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There are a few words I've got issues with. I mean, mumpreneur is another one I don't like. Don't like that word. I'm a mum. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm not. A, I'm not a mumpreneur though. Um, yeah, sages. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but I am. I mean, I am. But it's not what I'm about. It's not what I put out to the front. You know, I have three kids, but I don't talk about them mm. all the time. Except if they, if it's relevant. I mean, I, the presentation I gave to the um, students, the event marketing students, I talked about my 15 year old daughter. A couple of times because it was relevant. Yeah, you better get that. But we're going to wrap up any. Um, but we'll do this again, and, and we might do some live reviews. And I think we might pick Russell because he was quite keen. Um, actually, well, it depends if he's going to change it though. But um, yeah, uh, Doyle likes senior smarty pants. Yeah. Oh no, sorry, Daniel likes Doyle smarty pants. Yeah. Smarty pants is cool. Yeah, like that. Smarty pants. <laughs> so thanks for joining us today. This has been fun, and I'm really impressed that people are here it's awesome so thank you so much um and if you've got any questions um that have come up from this or you've got suggestions for future topics let me know i haven't worked out a schedule yet like i said this i'm just excited people are here today um this is awesome so we'll we'll do something but um yeah um, connect to me follow me here um you know tweet me 
yeah, connect on LinkedIn, email me, whatever it is. And um, yeah, well, but I'll certainly set up some other ones and probably this time slot, I think it's quite works quite well for okay. um, East and West Coast of um, Australia and also for the US, um, by the way, like lady things. So thank you very much. And I really look forward to hearing your questions and um, chatting to you again. So thanks for the time and um, we'll head off. <laughs>